So although I work today for Vertex, this business case is from a previous experience in Novartis. So for the ones who know, Novartis has been pretty, started pretty early with all the AI at FPNA. And I used to work in the, op, in the digital op for finance in Barcelona, where they have a big op that works with both FPNA and the data scientist team. And uh, coming back to the COVID pandemic, so four years ago, I was in charge of the cash flow of Spain. And I don't know if you remember those days, but in those days, there was like this fear all around the European Union about uh, the lack of liquidity inside of, of all the economy system. And we were trying to try to predict as accurate as possible uh, all the cash flow of the affiliate to secure the liquidity. So we have these major variables of the cash flow in the Spanish subsidiary. The main one was the account receivable that accounted for 70% of the cash flow. And then we have other three variables that were the accounts payables, the OCA, so that stands for the account of other current assets, and then the other current liabilities that all of them accounted for 30% of our total cash flow at that time. Uh, I think that the main point of this presentation or this practical business case that I just wanted to, to also present a practical business case um, is responding to the question on how AI, I, in this case, machine learning, can really uh, predict in an accurate manner the cash flow and how this can actually allow you to create a competitive advantage for your company or for the affiliate that you're working for when you apply actually all these predictive analytics, you not know, how it can ge really generate at the end um, a business impact that is what we are looking for as an FBN team. No? So in the next, moving to the next slide, we have these two variables, I would say, or these two buckets of nature variables. We have the APA and OCA and OCL that are very, let's say, predictable with the historical data. And when we are uh, confronted to this kind of variables, we have to go and search for the historical data and then to build a model with the data scientists to predict the future. So what we are going to do is to, we have different types of uh, statistical models that can help us. In that moment, it was, I think, linear regression that helped us to predict. Pretty easy, let's say, exercise because you have to go one go into your historical data to predict the future. However, I think that the problem becomes harder to solve when you are in an uncertain time. Again, in the context, in the context I explained that it was the COVID pandemic situation. And you have then the account receivables where it accounts for 70% of our total cash flow, but completely unpredictable with a historical data. Why? Because we have 70 customers that were the autonomous region in Spain. Um, we have other three private customers that were not paying as they used to pay as before, because remember that everyone at that time was behaving in a very hectic uh, behavior. So how we can do to predict the future if our historical data does not allow us to do so? So in that case, we're going to do what we call anticipated analytics. And we are going to then list all the variables that are in the real time, um, in, in real time relevant in order to predict, predict the future. So in this case, we listed the level of orders of each customer. We listed uh, how much the European Union was injecting into the healthcare system of Spain, the frequency that they were supposed to inject the economy or the, this or the the European Union was supposed to send all the uh, funds to the Spanish government. We also um, tried to do some credit um, credit rates between each of our customers in order to predict then how much will be the AR and the DCO for each customer. So I think that again, this is machine learning is not only used for historical data. You can use actually machine learning also for real time data. Train your model and then do the essence of your model. I think that the most important point of this business case is actually to 
show you how this impacts the business. So in the next slide, actually, we're going to present, the, I would say, the three different main impacts that I um, think that are relevant for this business case. So of course, the first one is that we could um, not only uh, decrease the AR and uh, also the DSO, but also we could anticipate the level of AR and DSO in order to negotiate a better fee with the bank, with the battery bank. bank. And we, we were doing this even in February or March, early in 2020, which actually allow us to uh, secure the liquidity of the affiliate for the, the rest of the, of the year and even for 2021. We actually were rated as a best case for, for Europe. Then um, I think that at the end, what these allow us or what AI allow us in FPNA is actually to create a competitive differentiation for any company and even for any subsidiary. And of course, the early that you start to do this, the best you are going to be positioned because as Shari explained, you have to create talent, you have to train the talent. And that is, I think, is the part that is, of course, is, is not easy when you when you catch up very late. Um, I would like just to end up this presentation with a quote of um, uh, of Kenneth D. Forbus of the National Science Board. Uh, the meeting was 15 days ago. I think that there is a, a YouTube video of the National uh, Science Board. And actually, he says that AI allows to augment, not to replace. Uh, and coming back to this competitive differentiation of any company, I think that actually what AI allow us to do in terms of FPNA is actually augment and not replace um, uh, our the added value that we add to any business as FPNA practitioners.